Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. It is 6 o'clock now, and we'll start off with our pledge, and then if uh, Commissioner Davis will do the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, and it is with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time that we have to come together as city officials and do what's best for our city. We ask that you watch over us as we make these decisions. God lead and direct us so we may further your cause here on earth. We ask you to be with us through the remainder of this time together. Help us, guide us, and lead us. We'll pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome everyone out tonight. I wear a mask tonight. I brought far unless you don't want to find anybody else. I moved down once. Oh no, here he comes. I can't. I can't. There he goes. Okay, first item is the approval of minutes from the last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the bills. Okay, all bills. Second. I'm, you know, okay. I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Those in favor signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. We have no old business, and the first item under new business is the audit. So we'll just let Dan do his thing. And Sir? We've got copies. Yeah, I think oh, we've okay. got copies. All right. Well, good. Yeah. Uh, you I'll, don't have this one. Yeah. I don't want anybody. Which one's that? That's the that's that's two pages. Yeah. Oh, the report, oh, yeah. Yeah, Amy fixed these up. Uh, she said they have to have those to send yeah, to somebody. To okay. Well, y'all sent me and my son's mind. I appreciate this. Okay. Mr. Conway, are you, sir? There's a handsome guy. Thank you. Oh, you're talking about AV. Way down there on the well, two page report, I don't think we have. This is because the state of Auditing Standards uh, requires us to inform the board basically that uh, we've been audited. Uh, because, you know, even though you all do the sign up on the selection of the auditors and so forth, we do, basically, we do all of our work here with the mayor and Larry and the staff. So this just basically informs the Commission that you've been audited, that there weren't any difficulties encountered, no corrected under and uh, corrected uh, misstatements, no disagreements with management, that we had you sign a letter saying today is there we asked for, that you didn't, as far as the audit side itself, you didn't consult with anybody else. So. Uh, the selfish one is that uh, I think that you already have it. Not this one, your opinion on this begins on page one. And this is a, this is three pages, but it's a clean opinion. Financial statements themselves start on page four. It's a statement of imposition. Since about uh, 19... Uh, governments have been required to, to give two different presentations. Uh, one of them is a traditional one that you budget on, which is more or less money in and money out. This one, on the business type activities in the middle column, has always been that way for things like water and sewer, sanitation, because it's based on a business like basis because you're charging for services. But the one for governmental activities, this would convert everything to the same basis it would be if it did operate as a business. One of the worst things on it, though, that starting about five years ago, we've had to pick up everything to do with the pensions. Basically, there's the credit outflows of resources, inflows of resources, and then this uh, uh, non current liability and their pension liability. This is all what it would take if one day the state just came along and said that the uh, city of Beaver Dam has to pay up on all of its pension liabilities because, as you know, Kentucky has among the worst uh, unfunded pension liabilities of, of any state in the nation. But under this presentation still, the net position of the city under governmental activities, the bottom is about $4.8 million, almost $4 million under business-type activities. So 
for the city as a whole, a total of 8.7 million, and then the component unit on the right is uh, tourism, which has a separate report. But it's integrated into the city because the city is entirely responsible for the points the uh, members. So, seven activities on page five is the same, same kind of business presentation. And it begins, as you see at the top and left, functions and programs because the purpose of, of all governments is to provide services. So governmental activities here, you have cemetery, general government, parks and recreation, fire, police, streets, tourism. Then you have the charges for services. So of course on the governmental activities, you don't have a great deal of charges for services because you're basically just providing services. Business activities, water, sewer, and sanitation, you start with expenses and over the right you show how those are funded. So then the governmental <coughs> activities, then you see that to fund those, it takes all sorts of taxes, uh, some other revenue, payment from component unit, the changes in net position, that even was a positive 17379 So the net position you know, went up by that amount to the $4.8 million. And the government activities, and we don't see this you know, really very often anymore, but, but the business activities, if you go down all the way to the bottom on changes in net position on the business activities, that was a positive almost $128,000. And we're used to seeing a lot of cities that there's a loss on that, particularly it seems like with the uh, sewer systems. Page six is balance sheet. This is the old traditional presentation. Uh, that has, uh, you see that those assets are almost two million and then the non-major funds we're getting into in the back. So the uh, fund balance here, overall just about two million dollars. So then you go down to the bottom and you show how you get from that to the 4.8 million. And you pick up a whole lot of capital assets and other things like fire engines and police cars. All this addition that you've done here. Um, and then you get in all the things on deferred outflows and inflows and long-term liabilities. But you still go under this presentation from $2 million to $4.8 million of essentially the net worth of the city as a whole. It's $4.8 million? Yes. And then on page 7, Revenues, expenditures, changes, and fund balance, and this is the traditional one. And you come down uh, to the end of that, and general fund shows a positive 60,000 there. Non-major funds positive another 60,000, so it's 121 plus overall. And on page eight, it shows how you get from 121,000 here to the 17,000 under the business presentation. And there you're picking up. Um, Governmental funds, uh, difference in capital outlay and depreciation. Uh, but the big one is the changes in the net pension and OPEP liabilities, and that, that reduced it by $196,000. So it brings you from 121 down to 17379 <coughs> Page 9 is the net position. That's the uh, balance sheet for water, sewer, and sanitation. And you can see if you look at the bottom of those across, a million two in water. 2.6 million in sewer and 135,000 sanitation. So every single one of those ended with a positive balance. And the same on the next one on uh, income statement. For those, if you look at changes in that position, all the way across, you know, not a tremendous profit or anything, but water 58,000, sewer 54,000, sanitation 15,000. So there's a total of 128. Page 11 is cash flows from each of those. And if you can see down just past the middle, the cash increased on every one of them. Water by 88,000, sewer by 20,000, sanitation by 45,000. Page 12 is the traditional fund. That's the payroll fund. And it's basically just some money in and out. It just holds, it holds cash and then uh, remits it for payroll liabilities. Other questions, those are the basic financial statements. Any questions on any of the basic parts of it? The pages with the notes seem to grow every year. A lot of that having to do with all the pensions. Okay. Uh, uh, one of the some certificates we're doing, we talk about the capital assets. Page 24, the government assets. Uh, beginning the year in net 
$5,909,958, increased by $22,616, decreased by $33,25. But the actual additions to it, if you look at how good they're down before depreciation is taken, the city actually spent $333,689 on additional fixed assets on the governmental side. And then on the next page is the water, sewer, and sanitation. And you see there the middle way spent about $121,000, but the depreciation on those was a little more, so the net actually declined by about $52,000. And it shows how the depreciation was allocated. Page 26 is long-term debt, and it shows how much was paid back, the ending balance, and how much is due within a year. So no new debt. Page 27 shows what it takes to pay it off each year. Bracketed on five years from 2026 to 2040. Same on the business type activities. How do those numbers compare with other communities of our size? I'm sorry, Paul. How do those numbers compare with other communities of our size that you've? Well, you know, I've had a lot of them that have actually been borrowing their way through some of these problems, and you're obviously not doing that. And the only debt, you know, that you have any significance is on amphitheater, because if you look at the rest of it, you know, I have a city somewhere, a little small city, and it's looking at having to refinance its rural development bonds because it can't make the payments on it. So you look at your business activities, you know, which is where the bonding usually goes on water, sewer, sanitation, you end the year on $140,000. And so, you know, you're looking at it in a very short period of time. If you don't do a project. That's what we talked about today. You paid off on June 30th. Okay. All right. Well, the regional wastewater gives us a discount, well, not a discount, but a grant for waste that we're sending. Yes. So instead of putting that money back in the fund. You've always been applying it against your debt. Yes. Yep. Okay. And you can see on the middle of page 27, if you paid it off the regular way, it would have paid off in 2028. These next, next page on 28 are all free routine. And then the big one, starting on page 29, and this one takes, goes all the way from. No, that's the pension. That's the pension. So that goes all the way from there to the bottom of page 30, 34. We actually consolidated some of that this year to get the volume of it down some. Those are all required. They've been required for a few years. We used to be able to disclose everything to the pensions and have a page note, but that's just not how it is now. We'll try to do some of this. If I'm not mistaken, counties don't have to do this, do they? Well, the county, if the county has a full-blown self-financial statement, they would have to show CDRS. Yeah, but do they have to do to the extent we do, or can they still do their half page? I don't see a full set of them because we don't audit any counties, but if it's done according to GAAP, they would have to do the same thing. But I think it's set up, the counties are a little different than cities because they've tried to get some things. That's the state exemption. They've tried to get some things changed. If they do a full set of GAAP-based financial statements, they would have to have the same thing. And we do a whole school district, and it's even worse than this because besides all this, they have teacher retirement. They have all the same disclosures on that. But they'll have to pass some, like some in all three of them, won't they? Yeah, we have some cities that have a hazard, and then you're basically adding about another 25% to that if you have a hazard. Page 37, I think, is pretty meaningful. Well, that's your budget comparison. And you can see the revenues exceeded the budget by $13,827. Expenditures were $28,458 less than budgeted, so that ended up at $42,285 better. And then you had some operating transfers, so when it's all said and done, your actual budget was $86,371 better than your final budget. Then you get into a few more things on the notes, on the pensions. And, of course, you know, OPEB is basically health insurance. It's what the city would have to do to fund entire people on health insurance. And there's some notes to all that. Supplementary information on 44 breaks down the special revenue funds, which are cemetery, community pride, LGEA, and road fund. And you see at the bottom, all those ended up with a positive balance. And if you look at the next page on 45, changes in fund balance, 
uh, changes in fund balance. They're all, they all ended up with, with a positive for the change in fund balance. Community pride, not much, but he only did $10. But, uh, <coughs> page 46 just breaks down the charges on uh, water, sewer, and sanitation. Or sewer being a million, one thirty nine five ninety four by far the biggest. Uh, page 47. I just want to see that. So, penalties, $30,000. $30,000 in penalties that we received yeah. from. <laughs> and you all did a pretty good job of staying on top of it. And I know yeah. you had some pressure from above. This time was the things you weren't able to do the way you normally do. Yeah. Because of COVID. I don't, that don't bother me much because, you know, we have to turn it off. When we have to send somebody else out back out there to turn it back on. No, 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 it doesn't, that doesn't bother me. I'm just yeah. amazed. I, I think it's something that you absolutely have to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not. You know, I'm amazed that people What's spend that much on penalties. Though, or the, yes. the people that don't cash flow themselves well enough and pay it every single month and pay reconnect re re yeah. charges. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, you know why they don't have any money is because, because they operate like that. Yeah. They're always a behind the eight ball. <laughs> when you start sick of penalty money, if you look at the annual percentage rate on a penalty that's for a few days, you know, you're talking about you know, 100 percent or more of an interest rate. Mm -hmm. The uh, report on page 47, term control, this is one that we, we have to report on uh, for term control and any violations, compliance problems or anything. This also a thing. So, so we didn't have any problem at all? We didn't, we didn't find it. We, didn't find it. we always have a few things that we do, and that we do sometimes in management letter if it's things like uh, Maybe you uh, fail to take a discount or you pay tax on something more supposed to. But even that, we didn't find anything in this. Well, I, I know. The There's been times in the past you'd have that something yeah. for me to mm -hmm. acknowledge what we were going to do different and sign off on this. So. so, any questions? I think like going to be for parties, but it doesn't look like that's possible tonight. It looks like they're running. They always are rolling. Yeah. Might yeah. Well, go anyway. yeah. well, it's like it'd be a line for a while. Are they lined uh, up out front? They're, they're inside. Oh, they're doing a fundraiser tonight. Uh, for who? Uh, one of the soccer. Uh, I did uh, see that. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Yeah, it's a. Okay. It's <laughs> for the soccer. Wait, who did? People oh. So much of their sales or tips or something. I don't know. I thought maybe they're doing the, the waiters and waitresses where you'd be. They may, they may be. I don't know. Okay, if no one has a question, we'll need to entertain a motion to accept the... I move to accept the report. We got this one. We're going to go over this one. Okay? It's the tourism. Are you going to go with the tourism, or is that just... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I just... I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I just I'm sorry. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't know the way he was going. I thought he was just going to go right in the other one. We did the same kind of assessment for key report for tourism, but it looks exactly like the other. We don't uh, report the same thing as far as uh, information that's provided to us and so forth. Um, this one is also a clean opinion. <clears throat> it hasn't always been, as you know. I'm sorry? This is also a clean opinion. It hasn't, hasn't always been. Um, Page three on the end is, uh, it shows the, uh, this one also goes through that whole conversion to the government, to from government side to uh, uh, business-like. And so if you see the only things that we had on that, prepayments were where um, you pay for a concert or something, but you haven't had it yet. That, that only shows up when you convert to the business side. Um, the, uh, uh, and the same thing on the unearned revenue, if you sold tickets, mm -hmm. if you haven't had the concert yet, that's unearned revenue, and that shows up as a liability, basically. And, of course, I, I don't think this differs a lot from those financial statements that you got from the Lichfield firm, but when you go through all this, mm -hmm. it does have, at the end of the year, it does have a deficit of $24,000. If you look at page four, that is the, uh, income statement, along with the traditional one, 
he lost $96,000 and then on the one when you make the, the adjustments for uh, to convert to the business like basis, then it was a loss of $101,000. It's really hard on a year like this to to relate it to anything else because for all practical purposes, you're shut down. You're, well, you're forced and to also know some right. of the money that we prepaid, they're coming back and we didn't have to pay them this time, right? So we're going to get well, that they, they used it. Yeah. It carried over. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we didn't, it, it, it'll show up this year as a better, as a gain instead of a loss. At least I assume that's the way to work. I, yeah, because we, we'll have yeah. to pay them again. I knew there were some we didn't have to pay again, which I was glad. And see, like everything we had last year, a lot of it was paid out because it's supposed to have been in May, and then June, which was this fiscal in. year, and everything was done in the next fiscal year. Yeah. So it's just that, moving it. I thought it. that was the way it worked. So I was, I wasn't really concerned about this, it. This will be an interesting year. I want to see how, how things go and what you're allowed to do. Well, we're going full steam. We're, well, we're meet, we are meeting the CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. We were able to set up with all the bands to do. Well, I mean, fortunately, we're to have this outdoor being because the indoor things, I think, still be difficult. Mm -hmm. We went to, last year, we went to a concert in E-Town. The Elf Theater up there has, has concerts. We, uh, we saw Clay Walker up there, and then we saw the Beach Boys at Ryman Auditorium. And then, you know, like a month later, you know, it was all shut down. So we hadn't gotten those in exactly when we did. Uh, mm -hmm. We couldn't have done it all last year. I have a question, because we've got the outdoor theater, and I know we could social distance that way. How does some place like the River Park Center put on a concert? They're putting on a couple of concerts. How, how can they? Are they, they social distancing? They don't have to. As of right they now, they have, have to. Spread something, maybe alternate the rows. It's just like we were in the sports center the other night for a ball game. They have some seats taped off. But, I mean, how? That's not a big place. They can't get that many people in there, can they? No. And I know one of those groups they got coming is expensive. How are they afford to do that? No offense. I just. No, I, no, I don't know. I mean, that's. I don't know which one you're talking about, but. Well, they're going to be at the Sports Center. That's what I, oh, I thought they were at the River Park. I think they're at the Sports Center. Sports Center, I think. Well, where's Jefferson Starship? They're, are, they, are they at the nah, River Park? And then Ted Nugent, wasn't he at the... He was going to be at the Sports Center. He was at the Sports Center. I think that's why I got confused, that some of them are at the Sports Center and some are at the River Park. But they have to be at 50% capacity. But they have to meet the social distancing. Social distancing so... Because, like, even our, ours to meet the social distancing, even on an outdoor still, which makes no sense, but a lot of things that's happened that make sense to me is we're going to be about 30% capacity right now. I thought we got closer to 40 or 50, but we didn't do that. Well, we can't fit them in there and still be the, six the distancing. Well, like, how many people could they get in the sports center social distancing? I don't know. I don't know about 1,500. Do you think they could get that many? That's what we're doing for basketball. Well, and that would be the number. But at a concert, see, they, that one back part, they, don't, they close it off. You just have people out there. Yeah, that's always sitting there for the ball. Yeah. I'm sorry, we got off track. I just, yeah, they it was sitting on the floor for a concert. Uh, no, wait, sports center, nobody's on the floor. At a concert, though? I don't doubt it. Hmm. Uh, well, that'd, wow. be, that'd be unusual for yeah. mm -hmm. Most of them do to use the floor. Yeah. Still, they wouldn't gain that much either. Though. I mean, I just was curious, because I, I think y'all did a good job. I saw the seating arrangements. I had no problem with it. Oh, Frankfurt signed off on it, so... I just think it's odd that one state's doing one thing and one state's doing another. Like Florida, they opened everything up. You go anywhere you want. I think 21 states, I think, have opened. That's Texas. That too. That's Texas. And I, and I just don't understand it. I don't think we're meant to. I don't think we are either. <laughs> That's your correct. I haven't bankrupted enough yet. Okay, now we go ahead and do the thing. Can that motion approve these? Well, that, that one I have to cover both of them. Can you I would do them separate. Just oh, well, Larry moved, moved except the order for the other one. Yeah. Did we vote on it? Did we not? I thought we did. Second. We have a motion second to approve the auditor's report for the city. Any further questions? Those in favor say about the aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Let's do a separate one for the tourism, please. Make a motion we accept the tourism report. Right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify thigh. Uh -huh. Opposed, same. And that one passes. Next item is lease on the. We're planning to talk about that in closed session if we can. Okay. Some of the. Okay, sure, sure, sure. And number three, the alcohol beverage control ordinance. 
I have talked about it. I don't know. I assume they all did. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's in here. What are you looking for? I lost mine. Just what you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Avery. Well, how come I lost mine? I don't get it. I just had no comment. I'm sorry, Avery. I took yours. I did not see it. I'll share it with you. What this is doing is taking out that section B, which the state has removed from state regulations. And we try when we set this up, we did everything. We mirrored the state on everything. Okay. And you said you're taking it out? Yes. Is that because of the training required 60 days before? Is that why you're doing uh, it? We're taking it out because we want to continue to match the states word for word. Okay. That's I thought maybe there was a reason because, you know, when you have somebody come in that has it's not trained, I mean we the, like the ball teams and stuff to make the money. I mean, I don't think they should have to they're just handing it across. It's not yeah. like they gotta be trained. Well, and that may be what the state the state did this last year, I believe, and we was had talked about doing it earlier, but yeah, I never understood why that we even had that was even in there. To be yeah. honest with you, well, like I say they pulled it out, and we just when we said like I said when we set it all up, we mirrored the state. And I just we would like to keep it mirrored the state. That way, there's no problems anywhere yeah, down the road. The motion we do away with Article B of this Section X of the Mandatory Responsible Beverage Service Drain. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Oh, it's section 10. I'm sorry. What is section X? That was in favor of seeing five aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Mike, you have anything? David? Percy? Okay. She don't want to talk. Jim? I'm doing fine. Charles? I'm good. I've already worked all my stuff out with Larry. <laughs> Kevin? Well, one thing I've got is uh, we are going to start uh, construction at the park, not park, at the cemetery. We're going to be tearing stuff down and then trying to come up with an idea on how to remodel it. Anybody got any ideas? We'd love to hear them. You're talking about the entrance, right? The entrance, yes. So that we make that lady happy. And I'm not fussing at her. She's right. I mean, I don't have a problem with what she did. We thought even more about some of that extra space back there of having a... Uh, mausoleum? Well, a mausoleum or even a you want cremation yeah. type burial. I take us oh. less spots. What? There again, when you have the cremation thing, do they have a do they have to have a spot? I mean, I thought they had the thing that you just like you had a little well, you cubby have, hole and they just put the well, if you do a mausoleum, right? But if you do a ground one, there you I see in another cemetery the four by four lots. They're not four by ten work. like ours. You could get a whole lot more in a section, and more people are having to opt that way now. Yeah, more people are getting cremated. But so instead right. of making them by uh, four by ten, we might be able to extend that life of. Yeah. Eric, so we're going to be locked in for a few more years. No, I know. We've talked a little bit about that. So a mausoleum or some cremation that we need to look at. I talked to Bill Stanley four or five months ago about maybe possibly purchasing some more of his property, and and he said he was he would talk about it. So. Well, he's open to the con yes. to it. Yeah. Well, we need to do something because how many well, years has it been? We had just opened that other new section. It's, it's almost full. It hadn't been, what, it was after my dad died, so that was 96, so it's been 20 years, maybe? Well, that, that was open in 93 when I come. But there was only one or two. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot there. Well, I'm just saying, we, we, some of us are going to live to see us having to do that. Some of us may not see it, but some of us will. How much more space? I don't know what percent capacity we have, but we actually had talked about it this winter going up and starting a new section. We yes. just haven't, haven't made it. Oh, it's a we already own. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that one section we built in, it's not too low anymore, so it wouldn't be too bad. There's some trees we got to take out, and we probably need to plan to go ahead and do it this year. But don't we just own two more sections now? It could be two large sections, or it could be three small, medium size. Well, it's just something to think about in the future. It's not immediate, but we need to get that on the thoughts. Okay, Larry, do you have anything? Uh, yes, it's got a couple things before we go into a closed session. Uh, we'll update. Uh, Division of Water has received all information. They're in the review process, so that's kind of where we are with the uh, Christmas lights. We need to decide what we're going to order. If not, we're going to be in the same position. We are this year. Next November. This this is November, so if we're going to order, we need to pick out and order. 
Well, I thought we decided what we were going to do. Well, you give me a catalog, I can pick it up. Well, I thought we talked about it. I thought we were, we were going to do the lighted garland on garland. all the lampposts downtown and move all the overhead ones off yeah. for this year, and then next year start buying. Where's the book at? Who's got the book? It's not in the book. You can get that anywhere. Okay, so you're going to take care of that. No, you'll take care of it. I'll direct you how to do it. <laughs> we'll get with you. Tell, show me what the order with. We'll get it ordered. Okay, I got one more question about the light. And uh, this is this is completely off of what we're doing about the city, but it is the city. What if we took lights and put down the amphitheater? Like had different, like put lights over the covered walks and run lights around so that people could walk around in the wintertime during the Christmas season. The power sources going well, we've got solar out. lights out there. Yeah, but I'm talking about like Christmas lights. No, so I know. Be, you know, like a Christmas light. Wouldn't, have we got any plug-ins walking around there? No. So it would all have to be on extension cords? Ooh, that would I'm be good. firing up generators. Yeah, that would about be good. I was hoping there was some electrical outlets out there. Somewhere. You're welcome to install them if you want to. Right. Give, me a, give me a ditcher. We'll cut it. Give me a trencher. I'll dig it out. No, I just wondered about that because I, I, I really thought we could make that really look very pretty down well, there. Well, something to look in the future because it would be a nice place for a uh, Christmas stroll. Yeah. All that. So we have to do a lot of planning before we get that well, done. Well, you know, uh, what is the park over there by the Winsboro Country Club? I can't Legion. Think of it's Legion. They do it, and people walk through it, I mean, all the time. And I thought, we ought to have something like that. That would be fun. Well, they I know fun. it's expensive. <laughs> I know it's expensive, and I know, but I'm saying, if we did it, like you said, a well, little at a time. Some of that. Yeah, but even some of your latest expenses, you're talking three, four, five thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, but some of the businesses sponsor put them up, they advertise with them, so that's but one way to look at it's it. It's going to be hard to get businesses to do three, four, five thousand oh, yeah. dollars for one. one subdivision. Might be a smaller setup, you know. But what it's, that's, I would love to. It would be yeah. awesome to do it. But Even if we just started it and got a little bit at a time. And you know me, I usually don't back down from a whole lot, but yeah, that was one of my back down. I knew it would be a lot of money. That's why I said I wasn't <laughs> wanting to do it all at once. Like I thought the first thing we could do maybe do the bridges, covered bridges, just outline them, and then they could walk and go through a covered bridge or something. But I saw a neat little thing the guy made out of PVC pipe. He, he, he made it in his own yard. It was just PVC pipe that went up and then it bent over, and he had like a tunnel, and he went through the tunnel with the lights. It was really interesting. It was, it was a lot of fun. And it was made out of PVC pipe. I thought, well, we can get that for sure. But like you say, the electrical part's what I was getting. That's, not, that's, that's the problem we run into. Because there's just no well, way. It's, a, it's tiny steps. We have to take a step at a time. Probably. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. But like I say, we can start sometime and maybe we can get that done. Larry, Larry's got to do it before he leaves. <laughs> it takes 25 years. What's your next little sort of thing there, Larry? Use a frame or something. Uh, we uh, I contacted all of our summer help uh, from last year. Uh, three of the four are coming back. One is taking another position, which they need to, <laughs> more education for his uh, major. Uh, I do have an application here, and I would ask that we hire a Kyle Quisenberry for part-time, starting at $10 an hour. Did you do a background check? Well, I'm afraid he may not be able to make it. I that. know he won't. Well, I know he assaulted a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hire him then. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> he hit you for that bacon, remember? Oh, okay. You remember he was getting, he reached for his bacon, he slapped you. <laughs> That's not assault. That's protecting your property. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds justified to me. It was justified for him. It's bacon you don't mess with. I'll abstain from this one so y'all can vote. I'm moving we uh, hire Kyle with Mary for summer work. I don't know him, so. It's my grandson. It's Kevin's grandson, so he can't vote on it. He, he's is. worked for Larry before. You I will, will tell straighten him. him up if he well, gives us any No, help. Larry will I'll straighten, straighten him up. Larry, he's worked I'm, for Larry. I second him. <laughs> We have a motion and yeah. a second. Larry's got every right. Larry knows. I will tell him straight up. You hit him if you, you beat the living daylights out of him if you want to. I don't care. Well, you know, you you know, you know, you know, you cannot do that. Why didn't you? That, that is something, but you can't do it. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Opposed, same. And, and note to Kevin. Abstained. I abstained on that no, one. He stepped out of the meeting. It's not, you can't abstain. Oh, yeah. I was outside. You stepped away from me because... Oh, I went and looked at your truck. That's one thing I learned at the KLC meeting. You can't, you can't abstain? abstain? No, you have to leave the meeting. Well, you can abstain, but it's the same as voting. Same, same as voting. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I should have got up and left then. I apologize. Yeah. I didn't know that, though. Well, you, yeah, she you just note and think that you did. I left. She didn't Thank know you. Thank Everybody was at him. Okay. okay. Last thing I have is uh, the 2020 board loss. Uh, I wasn't here last meeting. I was sick. Uh, 
Uh, our water loss in 2019 was at 2.5%, which is outstanding. For 2020, it's actually 5.8%. Uh, the state says anything under 15% is a well-run system, so we're still within parameters. And back up with there, what was the 2.5% for? That was just for 2019. Why calendar year? Yes. Okay. For 2020, it's 5.8%. Uh, the wastewater side in 2019, we was 65% difference for, versus what we sent to the regional sewer versus what we had sold. 2020, we're at 62% difference. So a little less rain uh, made a 3% difference. So it's that's actually that's money, money saving. So. Yeah. How much, do you have an idea how much that calculates out to be, saving wise? In gallon? No. No. I bet it's a lot of money. You really consider it. Oh yeah, it'd be several dollars. You know, three percent difference. Uh, it's kind of mirrored, pretty much mirrored last uh, 2019. So. Anything else? How come they yeah, got paid quarters down there? We okay. I don't know. <laughs> been I've got one quarters. thing just to let everybody know what I'm something I'm working on. David, of course, our code enforcement, I've talked to him quite a bit about some of this and I'm going to start digging even deeper. A large percentage of our code enforcement issues is dealing with rental property. And I don't know if you've driven around the city in the last month or so and looked around, but we have some rental property that has gone downhill bad. Uh, Several, well, a lot of areas, it's, but you can pretty much drive through town and almost pick out that's a rental house because in, in we section, have landlords that just are not taking care of their property. In a section of town that you didn't expect it. Yeah. So I've got a couple of people in town that own rental property that I have talked to and I'm going to meet with to try to come up with a strategy of something we can do. I've talked to other communities and they've got different things they're doing all the way from one community's got a permit system and if you have, and then they have an inspection, but when uh, a unit is empty before it can be rented again, it has to be inspected. First inspection is free, and it's mostly for cosmetic. It's like, do the lights work, do the electrical outlets work, is the floor carpet down right, is the windows broken, is the gutters hanging off? It's a lot of it's aesthetics. But one of them's got it down where if you have to come back a second time, there's a fee. One of them, if you have to come back a third time, it's a $1,000 fee to the property owner to pay for the inspection fee. And they, one city's got it set up where you have to have each unit permitted. No charge for the permit. It's more or less an informational thing. Without, you know who owns what and where yeah. it's at. But after, I think that was after the third, they failed the third inspection. They were given 30, they were basically, their, their uh, license were revoked and they had 30 days to get all their units empty. Wow. And they have a lot less problems. Not just the one that didn't, the failed inspection, all their units had. All their units. He lost his right mm. to be alone. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> they had one property owner had 42 units in there, and he got one of those citations. And they said his was fixed within two weeks. Uh, I I'd have fixed. That's, that's not good. I don't. Obviously, we don't want to go to. I would like to not have to go to that extreme here. For one thing, I don't want to do something that's going to be detrimental to the landlords who do take care of their property well, and keep it up right. Do that one time because that first person you did it to, and everybody else found out about it, they'd start fixing their stuff like that. But that's one thing. Well, you know, I think it would. Some that you drive through, there's some places here. It's like, I wouldn't want it next door to me. Yeah. And no one should have to have it next door to them. And it's getting worse. In the, it's, it's, I, I want to say it's worse than the last year. It's been in the first 10 years I was in office. You think that's a fair assessment, Larry? Just, I believe that because I know where I used to live. It wasn't bad at all when I first bought. When I left, it was really different. And a lot of it in the last, I know, I know what you're talking about. The last six months anything. has been, of course, with COVID, we've not been allowed to do anything with yeah. code enforcement. So I just want you all to be aware. I've got some of them praying one night next week. And if any of you are welcome well, to sit in if you want to. Go for it. With some of these landlords. I said, I don't want to do anything that's going to hurt the good ones. <laughs> so, well, if but, you make it straight across the board, though, I think everybody, if they don't step up, then they should be oh, fine. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, but there's something, you know, you can go in there and, knee-jerk reaction time put something in that even the ones who take care of their stuff okay that is hurting us and the uh, inspection thing may be one of them I don't know I've talked to ones that they would really hate to see that because when they get one empty they've got somebody usually waiting to go right in it I get that uh, but they would come back on us to make sure it when you contact us we'd have to do, be able to do that first inspection within 24 hours or something which as small as we are probably could be done because it would be with code enforcement. 
taking care of that, the lead in that. But uh, I just want everybody to be aware that, and maybe I've got some stuff and we're going to get some other cities we'll probably be getting with you and talking with them. This is not something we're going to do even next month. This is going to take a while to get through, but well, I, think it should be. I think it's time we, we've gone the route where we ask them to do it and expect them to do it. And I say them, I want to say that's just, it's like anything else, it's probably going to be the five or 10% of them. So now, now it's time to step up and put some teeth behind it. So I've said my piece on that. I'll leave it alone. I'm fine with it. <laughs> and I will say one other thing, uh, different topic. We've talked a little bit earlier when uh, Dan was here about the tourism and the concert season. We did put in our first half of the season. Tickets went crazy the first day. In fact, three of the shows are already more than paid for themselves. And they're two months out for the first one. And the two big ones, which I'm not concerned about. I'm, I was more concerned about a couple of the smaller ones than I were the two big ones. I, it always looks like th those are the ones that do the hard break even ones. But, uh, and they're all selling well. In fact, I think the, the, the smallest one is probably already about 60% sold out. And we have some that's up 70 and 80%, 85% sold out. And we still got one, two, three more shows to announce, maybe four. So, and all those, like I say, are by the CDC guidelines. We did have to send a plan to Frankfurt for approval on how we're getting people Can in. Can I ask a question about that? What if, say, in June, and I'm just throwing that month out there, what if in June they say, no more restrictions? What are you going to do? Open up the hillside. Well, I mean, are you going to let people go sit down at the bottom board? No, because we're having to sell those tickets. And see, all these bands and performers had to buy into all this. Okay. Because so, all of our stuff is based on a capacity now of 1,540 seats. So the only way we can actually make any more money would be up on the top. Mm -hmm. Well, that's... Because different. when you go down on that lower level, we're, like say, this pod system, you buy your table. You know exactly right. where you bought a table. And if we go to... Change it, it's going to be... Move shuffling thing. those around, it's not going to be some happy campers. I wouldn't like about no oh, <laughs> So I the hillside that. is still first kind of a first come, first serve thing. And we can, we can easily get another pro, probably 50% on the hillside from what's up there anyway. Uh, and what we've done, that's why we've worded everything. If you, if you look at all the concerts, it all, they all say the hillside will meet CDC guidelines. It didn't say today's CDC guidelines. It's whatever they will be. Because we pretty much know that they're, they're not going to be any worse than they are now, any more right. stringent. So, but that's something we can always offer more tickets because up. I was wondering it because that would help you all, you know, with the... And, and, and the performers are all aware of that. And that was probably, that was one of the things that kind of helped because they're all kind of betting on that that will happen. I know we had a conversation, I guess it was last week, with some of the tourism people. They're looking at the state starting to open up in May, except, and they threw that except in there for live concert performances. That makes no sense. And of course, I'm like, we're outside, people. Uh, we're not an indoor, but they don't stop. It's all, they're automatically in their mindset when they're thinking about a live, sure. they're thinking of indoor. indoor. They're not thinking of an outdoor. Are other outdoor theaters doing the same thing? I mean, I know there's some other, like Iroquois has <coughs> got one. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what they've done, but I know one of the agencies we've been working with, and we're fixing to make another announcement, but, and another one we're working with on a big one has talked about, said we're light years ahead of any other one they've looked at as far as what's set up and how we've got it set up to work. So. I make a motion with the only closed session. James, you're out of here. Second. Hey, I'm done with my part, so. Or I move to go open back up the session. And I second it. Okay. We have a motion to go back into open session. We did have closed session for a couple items. Most of them were contractual. Mm, excuse me. Thank you. I make a motion that we remove the old playground equipment from the park on First Street because it has become basically dangerous if you just want to break it down. It's become dangerous, it's falling apart. We're afraid somebody's going to get hurt. We're going to take that down and hopefully be able to put new equipment maybe up at the Oldham Park to replace it. That doesn't have to be in the minutes. Yeah, that doesn't have to be in the minutes. I just want he to talks talk. too much. All you do is the motion <laughs> is to remove the equipment for safety reasons. Correct. I just feel bad. Do it. It is something we have to do. Thank you. Do we have a second, Dan? Somebody does. Second. 
Okay, we got a motion and a second on the equipment. Any other discussion? Those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. I'd like to uh, make a bid that we advertise for a new fire truck. That uh, bid packet would be available uh, April 1st. No later. No later than April 1st, and bid has to be returned uh, by May 3rd. It'll be open during the May meeting. May 1st is on Saturday is why that was put to the 3rd. May 1st was on Saturday is why we wrote that oh, down as the 3rd. I thought May 1st, oh, we're going to do it on May 1st. Okay, 3rd, that's right. We won't do that. On May, May 3rd. Second. Oh, we have sorry. a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. I want to make a motion that we continue the current rate for sewer at Bluegrass Crossings from prior agreement through June the 30th, 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion well, passes. I'd like to make a motion that we extend the lease for Chris Henderson and the heating hatchets. Uh, we're going to do it for a five-year period. The first year is going to stay at a rate of 300, and years two, three, four, and five will be at a rate of 400. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Does anyone have anything else to bring up? Make a motion we adjourn.